So how much have 3D printers changed in the last 10 years? Yeah, g'day guys, I'd like you to meet my 3D printer. Now this is based on the Mendel 90 design, but it was modified by a very dear friend of mine, Hamish, into the Wiener 90. So why did he call it that? Well, I'll leave a link to the wiki page which he made and it explains it all. Now this was built with help from both Hamish and also my then 14 year old daughter. The deal was if she helped me build it, she gets to choose the color. Now it's my understanding that the Mendel 90 was one of the really pinnacle designs coming out of the early RepRap, home built nerd sort of 3D printing community. You know, it has a reputation for doing very good prints and I can't really argue with that. I've been really happy with it for the last nine years for the most part. Now I don't really know all of the changes which Hamish made to the Mendel 90 to turn it into this, but one of them was this PCB he designed to interface the E3D hot end into the printer. And another was to switch from a die bond frame to 20 millimeter MDF. The power supply on this one is just an old hacked ATX power supply from a computer. And the control board on it is a Duet Wi-Fi. Being Wi-Fi enabled, I communicate with it through a web interface. Now the only real modification to what I did was to add this little relay board triggered by one of its output pins and a little macro so each layer I send the head out of the way and use this to take a photo to make those hyperlapses. The filament holder is functional but you know it's pretty clunky. It's just a couple of bits of MDF held together with, uh, <laughs> with all thread. Switching filaments as easy as undoing bolts and threading things out and putting a new spool on and then trying to get bolts to line up and yeah, it's kind of a dick around. Now it's not really the fault of the Duet Wi-Fi, but I could never work out how to assign this thing a fixed IP address. So every time I turn the printer on, I've got to use IP scanner to go searching for its current IP. So today it can be found on 14. So it cost me roughly 500 bucks to make this. So here we see one of the things that drives me nuts. It's not printing. This is typically because it's lost Z height calibration and the nozzle's been pushed down too close to the bed and the filament couldn't get out. The extruder chews up the filament and I've got to pull the filament back out, cut off the damaged bit and then reinsert it. Now the way the filament feed system latches are these two screws and these washers are spring loaded and you have to like pull them over the edge of this bracket and it takes quite a lot of force enough to be really not comfortable on the fingers do this a couple of times <sighs> this one doesn't want to go and your fingers get kind of sore now you might be wondering why did that print not work as I often am see this little circuit board here that's got an infrared sensor. That's the probe to work out the height above the base, the glass sheet. And unfortunately, the way that board is mounted is not terribly rigid. So even small movements of that board knock it out of calibration. So then you've got to go back and do all the, the Z height probing, recalibrate the damn thing. And I've done that probably 50 times. And that drives me nuts. It's probably just some something wrong with what I did. I probably did a half assed job of mounting it or I'm sure these work a lot better on other people's printers than on mine. Okay, so now we've, we've reloaded the filament. Let's just tr go and try and print that again. These glass beds work surprisingly well. Now this print normally would print better than this. Me stopping every line and heading off to the corner does tend to cause quite a bit of stringiness. I'm not sure why I got the, the also the internal defects. That's not that typical. I normally get better quality than that. There's definitely also some layer defects in this one as well. I wasn't intending to throw this out and replace it and buy a new printer, but a few weeks ago I had a problem where the Z-height sensor had stopped working. It turned out just to be a connector issue. All I had to do was unplug the connector, plug it back in, and then it worked again. While the printer wasn't working, I started sort of surfing the internet a bit about looking at other printers. And one of the advantages, if you spend basically all your free time for four and a half years making videos for the internet, is that manufacturers sort of start taking notice of you a little bit. So when the opportunity arose to try out a modern printer, well couldn't really say no could I? I have no intention of this channel becoming a tech review channel. I guess both myself and Bamboo Labs were interested enough in the concept of how do these modern state-of-the-art printers compare 
with a good quality homemade hobby printer of 10 years ago. So that was very nice of them to send me this printer. No money changed hands. They do not require a review from me because there's already a million reviews of these printers on the internet, but they are interested in my experience in comparison. Bamboo Lads is not going to get to review this video before I publish it. So any opinions you hear in here, they're strictly mine. Oh hey, check this out. They get you going straight away with a bunch of filament straight in the box. Right, so how long does it actually take to get this set up and running? Please review the entire guide before operating the printer. Do not connect power until assembly is complete. Right. Okay, that didn't take long. The way these things sweep through, do a vibration survey and work out their own resonant modes and stuff is pretty impressive. So after that first power up, you gotta give the printer some time, probably, I don't know, five, 10, 15 minutes, and in this time, it's not only looking at its own dynamics, the vibrational response of the table it's on also gets measured. Well, looks like my dinner's ready and it looks like a good one. Some sort of really nice chicken with some peanut satay sauce. So I'll leave this printer just to jerk around and do whatever it wants to do and come back later. So in addition to the printer, Bamboo Labs also provided a variety of different uh, filaments for me to try out. What have we got here? So the smooth plate. So it looks like this one's designed to be used with glue stick. So there you can see the filaments which they sent me. And that's in addition to the three rolls they give you as the standard with the printer. So that's you get a PLA basic in two different colors and some support material. The machine also comes with a spare hot end and some what lubricant and screws and stuff I guess. So that was my first attempt at an Arduino powered watering system, but it was all pretty messy with all the wiring and stuff so I made just a much tidier version of it which ties into the relay board and I need to re-3D print this mounting thingy and it's been a bit of a challenge. I've printed a few times and I kind of struggle with it and it seems like the base is printing quite well but then I'm getting defects in some of the vertical structures which makes them even weaker than the bad design that I made and therefore they fail before I can use it. Like over here this is already broken. You can see what I mean. Although the, the bottom flat layers went pretty well, up here there's all sorts of defects. And they're basically through each of these vertical structures. And therefore it's useless. Again, same as the last one I tried. So I wonder if the X1 Carbon can print that better. In the past I've used Slice 3R and Cura, and this was just about the same. It's pretty self-explanatory to work your way through and work out how to use it. I made a mistake on one of the standoffs on this, so I ended up actually changing it and printing it a second time. So for that second run, I took off the filament changer and took the lid off it and just run it with a single spool so we could see what it looks like. So you can see just how fast this thing actually runs. This is the speed setting straight out of the box. This part took roughly five hours on the Wiener 90 and about one and a half in the Bamboo Lab. Man, come and check this out. This is amazing. This was my, my best shot at printing this and it kind of failed with bits breaking off and stuff. And this just looks perfect. I mean, this print is pretty amazing. It looks pretty cool. The only disadvantage that I can see compared to your old one is that it's not pink. <laughs> now I just need to strip all that out, mount the new mounting plate and remount the, the components. And the wiring should be much nicer. Cool, another job done. Okay, for the next job, this lens has got fungus in it, so I need to unscrew it 
to clean between the two glass elements. Since that's so tight, I guess I'm going to need two pairs of slip jaw pliers to grip it. What size do I need? Don't worry, I won't use slip jaws. I whipped up a couple of simple lens spanners and sent them off to the printer. Oh man, did I make two the same? Well, let's try this again with a more robust material. How about PG? So loading filament's really just as easy as just shove it down here until it grabs it. That's kind of cool. Sort of a little gripper thing there. I like how the app lets you monitor the print as it goes, and not just the progress, it's kind of fascinating to watch the thing move around too. Right, let's try this again. Pet G from the new printer, PLA from the old printer. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, PLA's a bit too brittle for that, plus the design's probably not ideal. Okay, the printer's picked up what it has to do, and it's off to the races. Man, this is so fast. This almost feels like making your lunch in a microwave oven. Cool. And once again, the part. Boy, it looks pretty good, huh? Let's go see if it works. <sighs> yep, I was kind of worried about that. This, it's just too slippery. Just cut a couple of pieces of rubber inner tube. I'll stretch those over the, the two flanges and let's see if that'll help, if we can get more of a grip like that. <laughs> okay, I need a stronger design. So more thickness around the ring, wider hand grips and yeah, maybe put a little grip on it. That plus some slicer setting should make for a much stronger one. Now I figured to slice it this time, I'm going to go for pretty much solid plastic with all of the lines of extrusion going in the direction that gives me the most strength. So let's give that a go. Right, next attempt. I'm not really sure why I put the knuckle dusters on both sides because one side's just going to go on the palm of my hand, but oh well, didn't think that through really. Man, this is tight. First thing I've done is just ripped up some of the rubber. I'll put a bit of solvent on there to try and loosen the adhesive. Do any of you camera guys have any Good ideas of what else I could try to try and get these two apart so I can get that fungus out because I'm really struggling here. So to summarize, what are my gripes about a sort of home-built printer like this? The main ones are that it's just not set and forget. It's not a tool that just works. Each time I go to use it, I always start with a feeling of is it going to work this time or is it not going to work? I may have to muck around setting my Z height again. Sometimes I get bad adhesion problems and have to muck around with uh, with glue sticks and stuff. Sometimes I don't need to, it just glues down well. I don't like the way I have to t change the filaments, it's kind of uncomfortable. I don't really like my filament mounting method, that's also not that great. The quality of prints is somewhat variable. Part of the quality issue in the prints is driven by my decision to do that um, hyperlapsing, but part of it is also just, I guess, inherent to the design or inherent to my lack of interest in spending hours and hours and hours tuning it. So how much have 3D printers changed in the last 10 years? Honestly, I'm blown away. You know, this did the job, need a lot of sort of constant attention and tuning, but it's given me 10 years of good service, made parts when I needed it, sometimes with a little bit of finicking around. You know, I really appreciate my mate Hamish on designing it, and also a big thanks to my daughter for helping build it. The Bamboo Labs is actually a bit smaller, takes a little less space, probably about the same weight, but has a bigger build volume, because this is like 190, 190, 240, I think. 
and this is a 256 cubed. In every possible way, in terms of ease of use, so far, it's just been no comparison. Big thank you to Bamboo Labs for sending me this. This is my idea of a 3D printer. It's a tool, when I need something, turn it on, send it its job, it just does it. I was never really looking to 3D printing as a hobby. If you're still using an old Mendel or RepRap, consider an upgrade. Thanks for watching.